Daryl Perry versus City of Keene, Fred Parcells, and Gary Lafrenier. Docket number 12, small claim 278. Uh, this is scheduled for hearing on the motion. Uh, hearing on the merits, however, I have a motion to dismiss filed by the defendants. Would you like to hear argument on that? Yes. Okay. want everything on the record. Your Honor, Eric Moss, on behalf of the Keene defendants. With me, half of the people is Gary Lafrenier, the Keene Fire Protection Officer, a prevention officer. Just for one moment, is the record going to pick up these voices clearly from here? Good. Thank you. Also in the courtroom in the back of the gallery is Fred Parcells, the Keene Housing Inspector. In the first instance, Your Honor, the Keene defendants have filed a motion to dismiss, and we would ask that the court to grant that motion to dismiss this claim without getting into the merits at all. I would submit that the Keene defendants' motion to dismiss speaks for itself, but if you'd like to hear a specific argument on our facts, I would. I'd like a record of this, please. In the first instance, Mr. Perry failed to state a claim upon which relief might be granted. It is my understanding that Mr. Perry does not have an ownership interest in the property, rather he simply rents a room at 75 Leverett Street. The individual Keene defendants entered the property pursuant to a properly issued administrative warrant by Judge Burke, and the defendants entered the property solely for the purpose of inspecting the property for housing and code enforcement violations, which they suspected had probable cause to be existed. The administrative warrant gave them no other authority, and that's all they went into the house for. The plaintiff alleged he was awakened during the inspection. The plaintiff does not, however, provide any legal authority, either in his original complaint or in his objection to our motion to dismiss, for the proposition that his alleged injury constitutes a civil rights violation. And as such, we would ask that it be dismissed. Additionally, there is no suggestion that under Monell, a civil rights violation would exist against the city of Keene in any capacity under a party of interest. The Keene defendants are also entitled to qualified official and statutory immunity. The word of this court to determine that a civil rights violation has been properly alleged. The individual Keene defendants are entitled to qualified immunity. A reasonable official in the Keene defendant's position would not have believed that conducting a property inspection pursuant to a properly issued administrative warrant constitutes a civil rights violation in any way, and therefore qualified immunity should attach. What time did this inspection occur? The administrative warrant was issued for a time frame between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. only. The defendants went in at approximately 8.45 a.m., almost 9 a.m. They were in the house for less than 20 minutes. And in fact, he and Mr. Perry were in the cell for potentially less than 5 seconds. Mr. Frenier was supposed to get in just to take a look, make sure the smoke detectors were checked, the walls were heat-rubbed, and then left the room. So total in the house may be less than 20 minutes and well within the time frame of the administrative warrant itself. Judge Nall. I'll get to you. I'll get to you. Likewise, we would ask that the court, again, if it were to find a civil rights violation issue, properly allege that official immunity similarly applies, that the Keene defendants are entitled to official immunity because their conduct was within the scope of their official capacity. There's no argument about that here. They were acting as town officials when they entered the house for the inspection. That their actions were discretionary and certainly not made in a lawful and reckless manner. And likewise, we would ask that statutory immunity similarly apply were this court to determine that a properly alleged claim was alleged. The alleged damages for being woken up fall squarely within the statutory meaning of personal injury under 50785, and therefore the Keene defendants are entitled to statutory immunity under that statute. Mr. Perry. Okay. I have filed an appeal or a response to their motion to dismiss. And I agree with you with that. The defendants appeal to their own authority, saying that as government officials, the government has granted them all of these immunities. Additionally, even though they did come in at 9 o'clock, I at the time was working a late second shift. I had been asleep for less than two hours when they came in, banging on doors, shouting, fire inspector, we're here for an inspection. Both Mr. Lafreniere and Mr. Parcells actually walked into my room while I was asleep, which is a violation of my privacy. Both Mr. Lafreniere and Mr. Parcells were given multiple chances to issue an apology for waking me. No apology was given. So basically, the defendants believe that their titles and their badges 
grant them immunity from personal responsibility, and that's what I want the court to decide. Okay. Uh, sir, have you any authority that would indicate that at 9 o'clock in the morning, given an appropriately executed administrative warrant, violates your rights to privacy? Well, I, I believe that the warrant was illegally issued by Judge Berg. Uh, I have a motion filed by my landlord that was uh, filed to Judge Berg, citing political reasons that he believes that Judge Berg has a uh, vendetta against him. Uh, can I issue those what, as... What just said? Uh, if that was an issue raised by your landlord, how does that cover you in any respect, sir? Well, because I am a tenant of my landlord, so if there's some kind of vendetta against him, I'm an innocent victim is so you a side that effect. there's a trickle-down effect, yes. if you will. Okay. Anything else, sir? No. Okay, I will take this motion to dismiss. Obviously, until I rule on the motion to dismiss, it would be premature to proceed on with merits, so I'm going to rule on the motion to dismiss, and obviously, if I rule in Mr. Perry's favor, we will schedule the mer matter for merits. If I rule in the uh, defendants, uh, if I rule for the defendants and dismiss the case, then that will end the case here. Your Honor, if I may, yes. uh, unfortunately, given that the small claims nature of this case and the fact that most of the key defendants have to potentially come back to argue the second time if the motion to dismiss were denied, uh, we would simply ask for affirmation given the fact that uh, we believe that the claim is underlying the privilege on the fact that it was open up, unfortunately, due to the proclamation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I would like to appeal his motion to request attorney's fees. I don't think you want to appeal it until I rule. Okay, I'll take the matter under advisement. Well, I guess object would be the proper term. Okay.